Welcome to the tutorial, Working with Saccade and Smooth Pursuit Paradigms in SMI Experiment Suite. SMI Experiment Suite includes a rich set of tools for the design and analysis of Saccade and Smooth Pursuit Paradigms. The study and analysis of such parameters has a fundamental role in neuroscience, psychology, and clinical research fields. In principle, Saccadic Paradigms consist of presenting the subject a visual target that jumps unexpectedly from a central position to the right or left, and measuring the time it takes the subject to make an eye movement toward the new target. This is called a reflexive psychotic task, which is also referred to as a pro-psychotic task. If the movement is in its opposite direction, this is an anti-psychotic task. Smooth pursuit eye movements allow us to focus our eyes on moving objects. Smooth pursuit paradigms require the participants to follow a moving target such as a dot with their eyes. In many cases, the dot moves following a sinusoidal function, with characteristics like frequency and amplitude. In this tutorial, you'll first see how easy it is to design experiments based on both saccade and smooth pursuit tasks. Then, I'll show you how to analyze the experimental data with tailored tools in Begaze. Let's start by creating a very simple reflexive psychotic task in Experiment Center. This will consist of a fixation cross followed by a circular target on the right side. This is easily created as a composite stimulus. I'll open the composite editor to begin. Once the editor opens, I'll select the target stimulus. The target editor appears so we can define our options. First is the type of target. For our psychotic task, we'll define two targets, both of type static. The position unit can either be in relative percentage or static pixels. In this experiment, I'm going to use percent. Now let's position the first target by specifying the X and Y positions. Here, I can choose center for both. We also want to define when the target will appear and for how long. I want this target to be displayed right from the beginning of the stimulus so I'll enter 0 for the start time. And I want it to vanish after 2 seconds, which in milliseconds is 2000, the value I'll enter for the end time. Next, we'll specify the target shape. From the available options, I'll choose Cross. A custom target can be created from any bitmap, PNG, or JPEG file. You can also modify the colors for the built-in shapes if desired. The defaults work for me. Now we click OK to save our changes. At this point, our target appears at the beginning of the stimulus and disappears two seconds later. In the same composite stimulus, let's add another target that appears on the right side of the screen when the first one vanishes. I'll click Target again. Next, I'll set my target type to static and position unit to percent. Let's move the target to the right at 80% of the screen width, while remaining centered vertically. I'll set the start time for 2 seconds, right when the first target disappears. The target will be displayed for a total time of 1 second, therefore the total duration of the stimulus will be set at 3000 milliseconds, a value I'll set in just a moment. I'll keep the target shape as a circle, filled with white. After clicking OK, we can review our definitions in the Composite Editor. We can even modify the settings if desired. For example, let's customize the names to identify them better. I'll label the first one Fixation Cross, and the second just Target. Furthermore, I can specify the width for both. Let's make them each 6%. I'm ready to apply my changes in the Composite Editor. And once I do that, you'll see the composite stimulus. Let's set the overall duration to 3 seconds, 3000 milliseconds. To see what we have, I'll save the experiment, calling it Reflexive Saccade Test. Now, I can lock the experiment and start a dry run. There's my fixation cross and the circle. The composite editor can also be used to create stimulus for a smooth pursuit paradigm. Let me show you how to build an experiment where the target moves in a horizontal sinusoidal pattern, 
so that the participants' smooth pursuit data can be tracked. This time, I will make one composite stimulus that displays a fixation cross and then another that uses a sinusoidal movement. I'll create a new experiment and again open the composite editor. Once more, I'll select target. First, we want to create a static fixation cross. I'll change the position unit to percent and shape to cross, leaving the rest of the attributes at their defaults. Once I save the composite stimulus, I can give it a name, fixation cross, and set the width, 6% again. I'll click apply to set our definition. Now let's create another composite stimulus for our moving target. Click composite, and then I'll click target one more time. In the target editor, I'll now choose a different type, sinusoidal movement. As you can see, there are other movement patterns as well, linear and sawtooth. Choosing sinusoidal movement gives us a new set of parameters. For consistency, I'll change the position unit to percent and start it at the center. Next, I'll set the amplitude along the x-axis to 33% and the y to 0. This will move the target in a sinusoidal pattern horizontally across the screen. Let's keep that up for 4,500 milliseconds, starting right at the beginning with a default circle. Once we click OK in the target editor, we can name this composite stimulus. I'll call this SP, short for Smooth Pursuit, Sinusoidal, and change the width to 6%. I'm ready to apply the stimulus. Again, we save the experiment. I'll name it SP Test. Now I'll lock it and give it a dry run. Here we can see the fixation cross appear, and then the target is moving horizontally across the screen in a sinusoidal fashion. Perfect. Obviously, these are very simple experiment examples. Much more complex experiments can be created for psychotic and smooth pursuit paradigms either using the techniques I just illustrated or by creating a stimulus list in a spreadsheet using Excel or an open source program, for example, and then, once it's created, importing it into Experiment Suite. Let's take a look at how that works. In my spreadsheet program, I have an example of a smooth pursuit experiment. All Experiment Suite users have this and the other stimulus list examples such as one for saccade static targets, available in the Stimulus List Examples directory, installed on the desktop by default. You can see how each stimulus is set up in separate rows, from text to composite. Once you've built up your stimulus list in this format, bringing it into Experiment Center is very straightforward. Simply choose New, then File, Import, Stimulus List. Navigate to the spreadsheet file and open it. And there's all your stimuli for the experiment. I'll quickly save the experiment, lock it, and then do a dry run so you can see it in action. The introductory text is followed by the stimulus targets. Now I'm ready to run it. After all my participants have completed the experiment, I just need to click Begaze to analyze the data. Naturally, all the standard BGAZE data visualizations are available, such as Gaze Replay, B-Swarm, and ScanPath. Let's take a look at our experiment with ScanPath for just one participant. Here, you can clearly visualize the eye tracking involved with this experiment. Line Graph is another pertinent visualization where we can see a wide range of gaze data over time for one or more participants. There is also information regarding the target, like velocity and acceleration, all selectable on the right. The light gray target is clearly moving in a sinusoidal pattern, and we can see the participant's eye movement with respect to the target in dark blue. Select events such as this one to highlight saccades, in this example a catch-up saccade. You can adjust the event detection parameters by choosing File, Adjust Event Detection. 
For a quantitative analysis, we'll turn to Metrics Export. Metrics Export includes a target statistics template, ideal for analyzing psychotic and smooth pursuit experiments. You can choose either a static or animated template for a single participant, according to the type of target used for your experiment. In keeping with our smooth pursuit experiment, I'll select the animated template. Under Select Dataset, you can easily define the datasets you are interested in. Now, I can move to Select Metrics, where the full spectrum of metrics is available, including many specific for psychotic and smooth pursuit paradigms. Of particular note are all the target details, such as target type. In addition, numerous metrics for the left eye are available, for example, saccade count, saccade frequency, and gain. Finally, I'll click Preview to display a sampling of the exported data. Here's all the various metrics we selected, appropriately filtered and applied. In this tutorial, you learned how to design saccade and smooth pursuit paradigm experiments with Experiment Center, and how to analyze the collected data with the dedicated features of Begaze. As you've seen, SMI Experiment Suite offers a full set of tools for the design and analysis of saccade and smooth pursuit tasks.